Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate, and it is officially cold in Seattle. And I realize I've said this before, but it does bear repeating. So I am finally wearing a hoodie that I bought in Disneyland back in February. And it was like slightly cold then, but you know, it was like Los Angeles. So, you know, this was actually too heavy, but finally I get to show it off. Anyway, enough of all of that. Let's get into this week's latest developer news. So first up, just a reminder that we are less than three weeks away from Microsoft Ignite in Orlando, Florida. And Microsoft Ignite will be taking place uh, from no November 4th through the 8th. And although the conference is sold out, you can follow along online and we will be streaming the keynote and select sessions live. And I'll be there along with all your Channel 9 favorites. So if you see me, please be sure to say hello, because I always love to see anyone who watches our shows. And speaking of that, Joey and Rick of Patch and Switch fame, and like, side note, they are legit rock stars at Ignite. It's, it's crazy. But they posted a great video on Twitter this week showing off what's inside the Microsoft Ignite attendee bag. And so they'll have a live show at Ignite as well. And so links to Microsoft Ignite uh, and to the unboxing or unbagging, as it were, are in the show notes in the description down below. And if you can't make it to Microsoft Ignite, you should see if uh, Microsoft Ignite, the tour, is coming to your city. And so we are back this year, and we are now going to be in 30 cities across the globe. And the first stop of the tour is in Paris. And not only will I be there, but I will be there on my birthday. So joy anniversaire à moi. Uh, my French is terrible. Anyway, links to Microsoft Ignite, the tour, are in the show notes in the description down below too. And seriously, if you see me in Paris, be sure to say bonjour. Next up, .NET Core 3.0 was only released a few weeks ago, but the dev team is not slowing down. And so the first preview for .NET Core 3.1 is now available for download. And .NET Core 3.1 will be a small release, and it's focused on key improvements in Blazor and Windows Desktop, which were the two big additions in .NET Core 3.0. And it's going to be a long-term service uh, release, LTS, and it's expected to final ship uh, with a final ship date of December 2019. And over on the .NET blog, Rich says that the primary goal of .NET Core 3.1 is to polish features and scenarios that the team delivered in .NET Core 3. And because it's an LTS release, it'll be supported for at least three years. And so I've got links uh, to the blog and uh, download links are um, in the show notes in the description down below. And alongside a new .NET Core 3.1 preview is a new preview of Visual Studio 2019. And so Visual Studio 2019 16.4 Preview 2 is now available for download, and it brings uh, along with it a really slick feature, which is the ability to display tabs in a vertical layout. And this was actually one of the most requested features of Visual Studio 2019, and so it's, it's really great to see this in preview. And so I've got links um, to download the new release in the show notes in the description. And in some other Visual Studio news, uh, starting with Visual Studio 2019 16.2, Developers can now debug JavaScript using the preview builds of the new Chromium-based uh, version of Microsoft Edge. And so just as a reminder, uh, the Microsoft Edge team is currently uh, building a version of Edge based on Chromium. And it works on Windows and Mac OS. It's really fantastic. And it's been my daily web browser since like April. And in the past, the Visual Studio uh, de um, team has been able to like debug JavaScript using the old version of Microsoft Edge, which is based on Edge HTML. But since VS 2019 16.2, that support has been uh, extended to the new preview releases that support the Chromium build. And so I've got a link to the show notes in the description that walks you through that whole process. In some AI news, my friend and colleague Amy Boyd shared the winners of the first Microsoft Azure AI Hackathon, which was hosted on DevPost. And so developers of all backgrounds and skill levels were invited to join and submit um, an AI project. And, and it could use Azure AI or it could just enhance an existing app. And there were over 900 participants and 69 projects submitted. Nice. And the winner was Trashe, which is a smart bin designed to help inform people about their recycling decisions. And so I've got a link to Amy's blog post that highlights Trashe and the other winners in the links down below. And congratulations. In some open source news, two new projects that I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more about at Microsoft Ignite were announced this week. And so the first is called Dapper, and it's an open source project um, that's designed to make it easier for every developer to build microservice applications. And so according to the announcement post, Dapper is an open source, portable, event-driven runtime that makes it easy for developers to build resilient, microservice, stateless, and stateful applications that run on the cloud and on the edge. And Dapper is really cool, and I look forward to learning more about 
about it at Ignite. And so I've got links to the announcement blog, the project's website, and uh, the GitHub in the show notes in the description. And related to Dapper, Microsoft also announced the new Open Application Model, or OAM, which is being developed in conjunction with Alibaba, and it's under the Open Web Foundation. And OAM is a specification for describing applications so that uh, the application's description is separated from the details about how uh, the application is deployed um, onto and managed by the infrastructure. And uh, the great thing about this specification is that it's vendor neutral, so it can be used on multiple clouds. And, and like Dapper, I expect to hear a lot more about OAM at Microsoft Ignite. And so I've got links to that announcement blog and its GitHub in the show notes uh, down below as well. On Channel 9 this week, we had lots of great content. First up on the IoT show, Olivier uh, previews some stuff that you will see in the IoT space at Microsoft Ignite, so that's awesome. And then we had Partly Cloudy, which is a brand new show that teaches you how to build a Xamarin.Forms app. And I, I really can't wait to uh, get some time to really dive deep into this series. I love it. And finally, the Cloud Native show had its first live episode. I love this. And so in it, Shane and Glenn built out um, a weather API application. And I really love the live format. This is really fun. And so I've got links to all those episodes in the show notes and the description. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So if you watch this show, you know that I like love the Nintendo Game Boy, which recently celebrated its 30th anniversary. And I know, I know, it made me feel really old when I realized that too. Um, I actually still have an old Game Boy Advance SP from like 2002 or 2003, and it still works, but the backlight isn't that great and the buttons are starting to show their age. So for people like me who love nostalgia and handheld uh, consoles, there's a company called Analog, and they're known for making super high quality retro consoles that work with original cartridges. And they've announced um, the brand new Analog Pocket. And it's gonna be out early next year. It's $200, which I know sounds ridiculous, but frankly, like just take my money now. It has two FPGAs, it works with all Game Boy games, and it will also have an adapter available for other handheld consoles. It has a super high resolution screen because like if I can't play Pokemon or Tetris and Retina, like I don't even know why I'm doing this show, frankly. But in all honesty, I cannot wait to check this out. I wish I could pre-order it now as like a, an early birthday gift. Anyway, let me know your favorite handheld gaming console uh, from the past present uh, in the comments down below. And like, let me know your thoughts on any of the other stories we covered this week. If you like this episode, please give it a like if you're watching on YouTube because it really helps us out. And please subscribe to Microsoft Developer for all of your nerd news. See you next time.